Hello everybody and welcome back to the Dragon's Library. I'm Ramble, the Dragon Librarian, and today we're doing a quick review of Deadpool and Wolverine. Brief side note that I'm adding after the fact. This review got delayed a little bit, partially just because I've been really busy with some other stuff going on, and then my computer wasn't working probably properly after I got Linux installed, so this is probably going to be a little delayed, but I still am going to try and get this video out sometime within like a two week more previous video. Probably not going to happen, but I'll try. Now, this movie came out almost a month ago at the time of recording. Originally, it was only two weeks, but I re-recorded and just have delaying it, so it's going to be a rather short review, despite the interruptions. But I did still think this movie was worth talking about, so let's get right into it. Deadpool and Wolverine is the third Deadpool movie. Originally a franchise owned by Fox, now owned by Disney. And after musing on this movie for a little bit, because I wasn't sure if I was going to talk about it, I think it's probably the worst of the Deadpool movies. And I also think it's a lot of fun and a pretty good action comedy with a lot of good moments. Yep, it's one of those movies. So compared to Deadpool 1 and even Deadpool 2, I think the overall story and like collective whole of the movie is weaker. A lot of the plot just kind of exists to set up the comedic moments, which fair, it's a Deadpool movie. And they basically shelved the entire secondary cast in the movies for this movie, which I will get back to later. And I know that probably doesn't seem to make much sense, that it could be so good if it's so bad. But let me lay out a quick summary first, and we'll get into the details. Deadpool stopped being a mercenary, and suddenly having a midnight crisis, after being rejected by the Avengers in an opening gag, which is apparently supposed to be like him trying out for the MCU or something. He's kidnapped by the TVA, just watch Loki if you want to know who they are. Not really important, they're time cops, that's all you need to know. And told that since Wolverine died in Logan, referred to as like the perfect Wolverine, his universe is slowly decaying, but upper management wants him relocated the MCU. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Disney. Deadpool is fine with this until they reveal that this is a rogue branch of this organization that's planning to blow up his timeline rather than letting it slowly decay for a few hundred years. Deadpool escapes, tries to get a replacement Wolverine, ends up picking what they dub the worst Wolverine, according to the TVA, and the two of them are there banished at the end of time and have to get back before Deadpool's timeline is completely erased. Wacky R-rated superhero hijinks ensue. Now, let's start with the obvious. Yes, the whole movie is basically a joke about Disney and Fox and the buyout and the destruction of the X-Men brand as a movie franchise, but still wanting to make money off Deadpool so they still have him around. The movie is also more on Fox's side rather than Disney, which makes me think some people forgot how bad some of Fox's movies actually were. Not saying Disney is necessarily better now, but at the time when Disney was still in like, you know, the height of their MCU popularity, they were kind of the better version. That whole lineup of spandex in the original X-Men stands out pretty strongly. And yes, Wolverine is in the default yellow spandex suit. Still, if you did like the old Fox movies, this is basically a final love letter to them, which is nice for fans of those movies. The Mad Max style wasteland at the end of time was full of various characters from either the Fox movies themselves, other non-MCU Marvel projects, and even just other movies that were cancelled in general, like the Gambit movie. Personally, I found the whole thing really funny. Chris Evans even shows up for one of the best fake-out cameo scenes I've ever seen. The jokes are well-written, the comedic action is fantastic as usual. I mean, Ryan Reynolds can basically do no wrong at this point, right? Speaking of the actor, he's clearly having fun in the role still. Hugh Jackman clearly wants to be here, and he's turning in a good performance as the various different Wolverines across the multiverse. And Wolverine finding this to swear and give a bit more bloody. I know he did that in Logan as well, and that was a good movie, but it was all in a serious drama. It's a bit more lighthearted. You can be an actual superhero movie and not a deconstruction. So I kind of liked that. Despite liking all that, though, and despite seeing the comedy is pretty strong, let me be clear. The fight with the skeleton is one of the best comedic action scenes I've ever seen, even compared to the highway scene. That's a really high bar. This movie, however, is still very flawed. So before we start with the negatives, I want to make a qualifying statement. I understand the movie was affected by the writer's strike and that was outside of any one person's control. Okay? You all get that? All right. Why the hell do they ditch this entire secondary cast for nearly the whole movie? A friend actually pointed it out to me and I was like, oh yeah, they did do that, didn't they? What the hell? After Deadpool gets grabbed by the TVA, we basically don't see them until the end of the movie. And I just 
what the hell? Like, Peter gets a few jokes and a cameo thing in a weird moment, but everyone else, Vanessa, Domino doesn't even show up, Cable's not there, no idea where most of the X-Men are. Why? The more I think about this, the more confused I get. The taxi driver, Blind Al, the people from the previous movies, the X-Force characters. You have a, an entire cast of these movies, and most of them have good, repeated, comedic bits to them that you can add and expand on and change throughout the movies. Why was this movie just throw all those old characters out of the bathwater so we can have a thousand cameos? The cameos were fun, but it was a little annoying. Unfortunately, since I didn't work on this movie, I don't know what the deal was. Maybe Domino and Cable's actors couldn't be brought back. I don't know. We probably won't know all the details for at least a few more years. But I did want to bring this up because it's really weird. The plot is also pretty meh. Like I said earlier, they need an excuse to get Deadpool away from all these main casts. So the whole thing is he's having a midlife crisis and he basically gets taken out by the TVA and then his motivation becomes getting back to his friends and family who, you know, the movie basically just kicks out of the way so you really don't feel much about it. It doesn't really feel like a real goal. And it's an okay motive on like a character level, but again, all the characters you're supposed to care about are basically non-presence. Vanessa dumped him, apparently, off screen. And it just feels like a large part of Deadpool 2 and Deadpool 1 got essentially like undone in the background. For no reason. Sorry if that sounded a bit ranty, I just need to get out of my system, I don't really like being overly negative. To wrap up this review, Deadpool and Wolverine is a very fun movie. Don't let everything I said disavow you of that. The action and the comedy are both on point. Ryan Reynolds does a good job, Hugh Jackman does a good job, there are some fun cameos, the villain is delightfully evil, and the other villain is very punchable, and it has some of the best scenes in the entire trilogy. Unfortunately, the story is just kind of there, it's functional, I guess, but the first Deadpool was also like a good movie in addition to all the jokes. Even Deadpool 2, which struggled in this respect, had more going on than this movie on a plot level. One of the things I came to realize is that, like Deadpool 2, this is going to live as a bunch of individual moments that I'll look up on YouTube when I want to rewatch them every once in a while, but not as a full-fledged movie I think entirely stands on its own. And I really like Deadpool 2 more, more than most people. <laughs> and I think this is how you should look at this movie. It's a collection of action and comedy scenes held together by a paper-thin, basically non-existent plot. The rest is serviceable, but nothing special. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. The plot is like a 5. Good scenes are like a 10. So it gets a 7 more out of just at law of averages, I guess. But it's a low 7. You'll have fun. You'll probably watch a lot of scenes online. That one scene with the Deadpool using Wolverine's skeleton as a weapon was amazing. And then you'll probably never watch the whole movie ever again. So, uh... Yeah. Moving on to the announcements. I have a few things planned for the upcoming few weeks. I'm gonna try and get them out sooner, but every time I say that, I get more and more delayed. This one got delayed because I was mid through doing doing another review for something I wasn't really interested in it again, and it just kind of spiraled out of control, so sorry about the delays. I am planning to go see the al new Alien movie, Aliens Romulus. That looks really good. Looks like they're going back to Aliens Roots. It's gonna be fun. I'm also going to be doing a review of Flintlock, that new game I just finished streaming. Currently, we're streaming Cruelty Squad, so that's been a lot of fun so far. After that, I'm planning to do the Black Wukong game. There's also a book review I want to do. Several new books are about to come out, too. The sequel to Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Miro is about to come out. And the next Rachel Aaron book is about to come out. Plus, I need to do a review of Book of Doors. So look forward to those in the next few months. Finally, I do eventually plan on doing a review of Another Crab's Treasure and The Dragon Prince. I just had to pencil this in. The Dragon Prince in particular is something I want to get out in the next few weeks, but we'll see how that goes. I'm still trying to sort through my opinions, and I don't want to rush that review because last time I rushed it, and I had second thoughts later, and it haunts me. That's basically it. Moving on to the out card, we've got the subscribe orb, a video you took events. Click on both those things. They're great. Go to my channel, subscribe, check out some more videos if you want, and maybe join me when I stream on 7.30, Tuesday and Thursday, Central Standard Time. See you guys next time. Bye!